Hello and welcome to Tank School. I'm Professor Daskro, not really a professor, but this is a video series that I'm doing to give you an idea of how to be a better tanker, especially with Armored Kill coming out. I know you're all excited about this. I certainly am. A whole lot more excited about it than Close Quarters, I'll tell you that. Now, in this eight-part series, I'm going to start with the very basics and work my way up all the way to some really advanced concepts. This isn't going to be a video series where I give you the ideal perk loadout. You can go to other series for that one. I'm actually going to give you a an understanding of the thought process of why uh, you should choose certain types of perks over others, why you should play the tank differently in different settings and in different scenarios based on a, a variety of different assumptions that we will all critically assess. And in this eight-part series, in the basics, it's just part one, which is talking about me, introduction, which is what this is, as well as what is a tank, what are the basic attributes of it, that kind of thing. Part two is is looking at all the various perks that are there within the tanks. This isn't which perk is better uh, for you, it's just level setting everyone. What are the various perks we all understand what they are and the pros and cons behind them. Part three is a damage assessment. How do tanks take damage? Part four is looking at the power of maneuverability. Why maneuver warfare is so important and so critical for tanks in the Battlefield 3 and how it can be a huge enabler for you and your team in those battles. Part five is looking at tanks as a team weapon. Tanks as a as a platform where multiple people who, when working together, can have some huge, huge impacts. We're going to look at part six and the roles of the tank in various types of gameplays, game modes, rush, conquest, conquest large, that kind of thing. Part seven is a detailed analysis and assessment of why we choose certain perks under certain scenarios and going through the thought process of why we go through that. And then finally, part eight is sort of a case study. I'm gonna take actual footage that either from me or from my friends or from those that have submitted footage to me and talk about what happened, what were the decisions that they made, why were those good or bad decisions, and going through the thought process so that we can understand uh, if we ever get in similar situations, how we should react or how we can react or at least what our options are. There'll probably be some additional uh, parts uh, as Armored Kill actually comes out, and I sort of give an update for those various new types of perks out there, the new types of vehicles, so on and so forth. But with all that being said, let's go into introduction and tank attributes. Okay, introduction. Now, I'm not a professor. I haven't gone to an actual tank school, but... I have been tanking for quite a long time. In fact, I've been tanking in the Battlefield series since it came out in, what, 2002 and Battlefield 942. And in addition to that, I've also been playing sort of in the uh, Battlefield competitive circuit uh, for the last 10 years as well, playing in numerous organized online gaming events as well as traveling around the United States to play these, you know, these events for prizes and things like that. And through all, all this experience, I have been doing almost exclusively tanking. So when I'm on a team, my role has been to drive the tank around. And because of that, I have been tanking in numerous Battlefield games and in Battlefield 3. And I have a pretty good understanding of, of how tanks work and what they're good for and what they're not good for. And um, the thought process of, of how you use a tank. Now, that's enough about me for right now. Instead, let's go into the attributes of tanking. All right, on to the tank basics. What is a tank? A tank is just this big vehicle here that you can get in and you can maneuver with it. Let's get into the vehicle and talk a little bit about what we see. The tank has a main gun. We see that big gun that is sticking out and protruding. It has a main gun that fires and it reloads every five seconds. It fires and can destroy objects. It just destroyed this little uh, tin wall. I can also shoot it and destroy part of that building. I destroyed part of that building. It's that easy. I don't have a, a, any ammunition if I look to the right. It just reloads every five seconds, but I also have health that's above my little uh, infantry health bar, the little uh, EKG that's going off. It says 100% because it is 100%. 
Uh, I have a a main gun that swivels around the turret. It th swivels 360 degrees. It's really quite simple. I'm just moving my mouse around. I also have uh, some perks that I can use. For instance, I'm running zoom optics, so if I push my mouse too, I can zoom in. It's pretty cool. I also have, if you see uh, in the bottom, Canon AP Ready. It's my main gun. And if I scroll up and down, I see a number moving. That's distance away from where I'm looking at. And so if I scroll up, it keeps on getting larger and larger. So that tank is about 80 meters. Now I want to show you guys something about the tank shell. The tank shell is not like it is similar to uh, your infantry rifles in that it has an arc. But the arc with a tank shell is much more profound. So I'm going to line up my tank uh, my tank rate reticle so that I can just shoot right here. And I'm going to aim for uh, let's aim for something that's somewhat far away. I don't know. Let's aim for this. Let's aim for the top of this building. So I'm going to aim for the top of the building. I'm going to fire. Now that didn't hit the top of the building. It hit lower than the top of the building. That's because tank shells have pretty significant arc. And I'm going to zoom out and zoom in. I'm going to aim again for the top of that building, zoom out, and I'm going to fire again. You'll notice that it didn't hit the top. It instead hit a few feet below. That's one of the critical things you have to know about when using a tank, is that the tank shell has an arc. Now what about some of its secondary guns? When you unlock certain perks, you get secondary guns. In this case, I'm going to push my F key and switch to canister. It says canister in the bottom and says ready. Does that arc? Well, we really can't tell from hitting anything here. Maybe we can hit, uh, I don't know, is there a Jeep up here? I don't see one. Maybe we can just hit maybe the uh, the the bottom. I'm gonna, if there's any arc, maybe it won't hit the, the vehicle. Well, I couldn't tell there, but for the sake of discussion, the canister shot doesn't have nearly as significant of an arc, and as such, doesn't need to be aimed higher to be compensated. Let's jump out of the tank and talk about a little bit about the damage system. Does the tank take damage from shooting it? I loaded a mag into it, still at 100% health. That means that it doesn't actually take damage when you as an infantry guy shoot your rifle at it, nor does it actually take suppression. I can't show that here, but that's something that we have to remember. Secondly, the tank has different areas that take different types of damage. So the front takes the least amount of damage. The sides take a variable amount of damage depending on the angle you fire at. So for instance, if I fire at a very shallow angle, such as aiming right here, shallow angle, let's see how much damage it did. It did. 82 damage. I'm going to reload again. I'm going to fire again. Is it going to do 18 damage like the uh, like last time? Or are we going to fire right in the middle? No. It did well over 18 damage because the angles are different. Now, I want to show you guys all of a sudden here. Look what's happening. I have this, this noise. My health's going down. This is called disabling. When I am disabled, I can't go as fast, and I continue to lose health. I have to get out, and i got to repair it quickly. If I don't repair it quickly, the tank explodes. Now, you see the fire in the back. Fire shows that it's uh, that it's disabled. Disabling means I can't go fast back and forth, but I'm going to keep on repairing it. Now, it looks like it's done, right? It looks like it's done, but my reticle says that it's only about, what, 80% done? So it's still disabled, and look what happens. It starts losing health again. We have to get out, and we have to repair it in full. If we don't have to repair it in full, then, then we can't stop that bleed. Now, I'm going to not repair it in full again. I'm still disabled. I still can't move that fast. And I take damage yet again. I, I'm moving really, really slowly. I'm going to repair it in full this time around. So the sides take more damage than the front. The, the rear takes by far the most damage. And so now I'm back to 100%. I can move really, really fast now, forward and backwards. Now, I want to show you guys something because a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people think that this is how you the, the tank maneuvers, but it may be the other way around. Let's play a little game. I want to go forward, push the W key. Right? That makes sense. I want to go forward and push D to go right. I go right. Now, one thing I can do with tanking is that I can take my hands off all the keys. I, let's say I want to just pivot to the right. I can't do that with a regular vehicle, but if I just push this D key, I start pivoting. Pretty cool. I pivot to the right, push the A. Same thing. I can't do that with a, with a regular Jeep. Jeeps have to use a combination of, of uh, forward or reverse in order to, uh, to, to move around accordingly. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If I push D... I go right, but if I push S and D, do I also go right? Let's try it out. I'm going to reverse and then push D, so I'm reversing. No, I'm going left. I'm going left. What happens if I do S and A? Uh-oh, wait, I'm not going left, going right. 
You see what's happening, guys? When I reverse, my left and right movements are flipped on me. It only happens when I'm doing it in reverse. If I stop and push A again, I go, I go left. But if I com combine it with D, oh, I'm turned around. I'm going to let go of, of the back button again, and I start going left again. That's something that a lot of people don't realize when reversing, is that you will start to have everything inversed in terms of your left and right movements. The next thing I want to talk about is the importance of turbo. Turbo is uh, the shift key. It makes me go fast. So I'm, gonna, I'm going regular speed right now. I'm not pushing anything else. I'm just pushing that uh, the forward key. And I'm going to push that turbo. Shift. And I go fast. I go fast. And as I go fast, though, I begin to lose some of my maneuverability. I don't, I don't completely lose it. I can still pivot back and forth. And in fact, if I get back here in time, I do. I'm pushing my A button to go left, and I'm slowly moving left. Let's let go of the turbo and see what happens. I'm going. I'm actually going to go turbo right this time, and I'm going to let go of the, the the turbo, and then watch what happens. I begin to pivot much more significantly to the right while I'm going forward. So when we are going turbo, we lose some of our maneuverability. It means that when we're going things like uh, downhills and stuff, so I'm going to do that right now, and I want to try to pivot around, I have much more of a chance to sort of drift out. Drift out is in my, my rear of my tank begins to, uh, begins to get ahead of me. So if I go over this and I start going through this little valley, I'm pushing my turbo, and I want to take a left turn. Uh-oh. Oh. Now, see, that, that took a lot of turning, and if I would have kept on holding that, that, that left, I probably would have overcompensated. I probably would have actually overcreated that turn and not been able to make that good 9 degree turn that we saw there. Nonetheless, though, let's talk about um, other aspects of the tank. As we saw, the tank can blow up uh, portions of buildings. It can blow up vehicles really easily. It can blow this up, and it does. It blows it up real quick. Well, that was fast. If I ram a tank with a Jeep, does it take damage? Let's find out. I'm going to get in this Jeep, and I'm going to back up, and I'm going to hit it forward. And I took a good hit on it. I don't take any damage. Does the tank keep taking any damage? No, it doesn't. And that's because, the, for the most part, tanks don't take physical damage. They take some physical damage in some situations, but for the most part, the physical damage that we saw in, in past Battlefield games isn't nearly as severe. Um, finally, what, we, what I'd like to talk about is the, uh, the fact that the tank has more than one position. You see, I can push this F2 button, and I can see that I got, I'm at a gunner now. I have, a, I have a machine gun, and I can zoom in, and I can fire things, and I can I can help protect the tank. And I can look independent of each other. I can go to the CIT, CIT position. This is a position that locks onto things, and I can actually push the, the, the right mouse, and I can actually see that I have thermals. It means that I can now have this sort of infrared capability while locking onto people. Now, one other trick I want to show you guys. I'm going to push F1. I'm back in the tank. If I want to get out in the tank, what happens if I push the escape button? If I push the escape button, I get out in the front of the tank. But let's say I move my tank turret to the rear. What happens? Do I get out in the front of the rear? The answer is the rear. I get out in the rear because wherever my turret's positioned, I'm going to get out. Now, what if I, for instance, am in the gunner position? Does that also apply? I'm going to get try to, I'm looking at the rear. I get out in the rear. Does it also apply to CATV? I'm looking at the, the, uh, the three o'clock side. I get out in the three o'clock side. It's really that easy. Now, the tank can also be damaged by the repair tool, so if there's an enemy in this tank and I start repair tooling it, it takes a lot of damage very quickly. And um, and it takes damage from a variety of different types of weapons out there. I'll be going over those in future episodes. For right now, I just want to talk about the basics. So, if this is too easy for you, and you already know about this, you already know about the perks, skip this episode, skip episode 2, go to part 3, because then we go to more stuff. If you don't know all about the perks or want a, a little bit more descriptions about them, check out part 2.